In this video, we're going to learn how to implement the singleton design pattern in C++. The singleton design pattern restricts the instantiation of a class to a single object, so our program should only have a single instance of the singleton object. The singleton pattern is useful for coordinating the usage of a shared resource across a program, such as logging, or a database connection, or a thread pool. So let's implement this pattern in C++ now. The first thing we'll do is make a class called singleton. And pretty much everything we're going to be doing is going to be focused on ensuring that there's only ever a single instance of this class. So the first thing we're going to do is actually make the constructor a protected member function. The reason we're going to do that is so that a singleton object cannot be instantiated outside of the singleton class itself. What we'll say is singleton, open bracket, close bracket, is equal to default. And here we're using the default specifier to ensure that the compiler generated default constructor is used with our singleton class. And because the singleton constructor is a protected member, we can't actually instantiate a singleton outside of the singleton class. So if we try to here in our main function, if we save and try to compile and run our program, we actually get an error. It says calling a protected constructor of class singleton. We actually want that error to occur because we want the singleton class to actually manage the instantiation and the access to the one singleton object instance. Static member functions allow us to create functions that are really connected to the class rather than any particular object instance. We'll create a static member function called getInstance that's going to be responsible for creating and allowing access to the one singleton object instance. So the first thing we'll do is say public to make this a public static member function. Then we'll say static to make this a static member function. The function is going to return a reference to the one singleton object instance. And we'll call the function itself getInstance which is the typical name for this function. Sometimes you might see the name get used instead because it's a bit shorter. So if we make a local variable singleton instance, when this function is called at this point here, the singleton object instance will be created. But when the function returns, the singleton instance will no longer exist. We want the lifetime of the singleton object instance to persist. We'll make it a static local variable. We'll say static singleton instance. So because this is a static local variable, the singleton object instance will be created the first time the get instance function is called. But the lifetime of that singleton object instance will now be until the end of the program's execution. And subsequent calls to get instance will just use that same existing singleton object instance. So we'll have the function return a reference to that singleton object instance. And what's going to happen is that the first time the function is called, the singleton object instance will be created. And then we're going to return a reference to that instance. On subsequent calls to the function, it's not like a new singleton object instance is going to be created. Instead, because it's a static local variable, that existing singleton object instance is still there and the function is going to return that same instance. Now just to make our singleton object a little bit more interesting, let's add a public member variable data that's going to be an int. That will also be useful in making sure that we do indeed have a single singleton object. Now let's try to use our get instance static member function to actually get at the singleton object instance. So down here in our main function, we'll comment out this. And now we'll say singleton, and we'll have a reference to a singleton. We'll call it singleton one. And we'll assign it singleton colon colon get instance. So we're calling the static member function get instance. And you can see here, it's really connected to the class rather than any particular object instance. So we're using singleton colon colon to access it. Now we could actually set the 
data member variable of the singleton object instance by saying singleton one dot data is equal to 20. And right now we're setting the data member variable of that singleton object instance, the one instance. Singleton one is just a reference to that instance. We could output this member variable. We could say C out and we'll have singleton one dot data is equal to, and then we'll output the value itself with singleton one dot data followed by a new line. And if we save this and run it, we'll get singleton one data is equal to 20. Now, what if we made a second reference to the singleton object instance using the get instance function again? So we'll say singleton and singleton two is equal to singleton colon colon get instance. So on the second call to the get instance static member function, it's going to be returning a reference to the same singleton object instance as before. So for example, we could say C out and we'll have singleton two here now. So we'll have singleton two dot data and singleton two dot data. And if we save and run this, we're going to find that singleton two dot data is also equal to 20. And that's because singleton two is a reference to the same object in memory, the same one singleton object that's allowed to exist. We don't actually need to use a reference variable to access the singleton object instance. We could just say singleton colon colon get instance. And this is going to return the reference and we could just use it directly. So we could say, dot data is equal to 50. Then we could output the data member variable and we'll see that it's been updated to 50. And again, we're going to use the get instance static member function to access the reference and we'll output an inline as well. So we can save this and run it. And now we'll get that data is set to 50. If we were to copy and paste these C out statements that use the singleton one and singleton two references, we'll find again that data is set to 50. Because again, these are references to the exact same object. Our implementation as it is now could be a bit error prone, especially if the programmer were to make a mistake. So for example, if we said singleton and then singleton n and we forgot the and here to make this a reference and we said this is equal to singleton one this is called the copy constructor this is going to create a copy of the singleton one object and it actually will be a copy we can tell by setting the data member variable of singleton n so if we say singleton n dot data is equal to 100. And then we output singleton one dot data and we output singleton n dot data. We're going to find that they actually are two different values. So if we save and run this, we'll get that singleton one data is still 50, but singleton n's data member variable is now 100. So there actually are two singleton object instances right now. And that's because this here uses what's called the copy constructor. That's a special member function that classes in C++ are given by default. And the copy constructor will result in a new singleton object instance being created. To solve this problem, we can make the copy constructor a deleted function. So what we'll do is up here say singleton const singleton reference is equal to delete and here we're using the delete specifier to turn the default copy constructor into a deleted function we're telling the compiler explicitly 
not to include this function in our class. Now, if we try to save and run our program, we'll get a compiler error. If we scroll down here, it says call to deleted constructor of singleton. So by using this delete specifier, we were able to turn the copy constructor into a deleted function. This will explicitly prevent it from being used to create more singleton objects. For a similar reason, we should also turn the move constructor and copy and move assignment operators into deleted functions. So we'll say singleton, singleton, and, and for the move constructor. And then we'll say singleton and operator equals const singleton and is equal to delete for the copy assignment operator. And then finally, we'll say singleton and operator is equal to singleton and and is equal to delete for the move assignment operator. And if we save and run this, all of this code here will be okay. We still get a compiler error though, because we're trying to use the copy constructor. We purposely made the copy constructor a deleted function to prevent programmers from using the copy constructor. Once we comment this code out, if we save, compile, and run our program, we will get the expected results again. There's a couple things about the implementation of our singleton design pattern that I should point out. So right here, when we use a static local variable for our singleton instance, this actually has a couple good properties. Static local variables are thread safe, which means if multiple threads use our singleton object, it won't result in multiple singleton objects being instantiated, which is possible with some other implementations of the pattern. Static local variables are also only created when the function is called for the first time. This means that if our program never needs the singleton object by calling get instance, it will never actually be created. This can be a great property to have because resources like memory aren't being used unless they're really needed. We call this lazy instantiation, and it's in contrast to eager instantiation where a singleton object is created in advance. Some people consider the singleton pattern to be an anti-pattern. In other words, something we shouldn't use because it introduces global state in our program, which can lead to code that's more difficult to debug, understand, and trace due to side effects that occur as different parts of the program modify the shared state over a period of time. So a similar problem to that of global variables. This might be a fair criticism of the pattern but sometimes it doesn't matter as much. For example, we could use the singleton pattern to store read-only configuration information for a program that is read from a config file at the start of our program's execution. This sort of configuration data might be required by all different parts of our program, but at the same time, because it's read-only data, side effects wouldn't occur. So this has been how we can implement the singleton design pattern in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.